Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, this wonderful, beautiful day you've given us, Father God. We thank you for our mothers that you've given us. Thank you, Father, for the godly example that they've led for us, for us to be able to glean from them and uh, to be able to just walk in those truths, the, the words that Hannah sang there, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord. The love that you have given that is poured through mothers for their children, that you have put that in them, Father God, and when they love, that is the love that you have for all of us as your children. We thank you, Father, for the mothers. We bless them. We call them blessed in the name of the Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for your mighty word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. All right, somebody asked me earlier, is this going to be a quick message? And no dishonor to mothers, but it is going to be a quick message because we want to feed our ladies. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through pretty quick. We'll see. But, uh, you know, we have in our society a certain day that is set aside, which we call Mother's Day, right? If I remember right, somebody, I uh, forget the lady's name, but she started uh, putting it out there in the late 1800s. And then I think when uh, Wilson came along as president, another lady took up the battle cry for that to make a, a special day for mothers. And uh, he declared it. And uh, I think it was about 1912 or somewhere around there. And uh, it's something that's been with us for a while. Uh, I made the comment a while back <clears throat> that here in America, we have uh, probably a day for everything. And I was, was kind of joking about it. I said, we've probably got a national day for this and that. And then I said, a national day for toothbrushes even. And I was joking about that. And after church, Cisco came up to me and said, Pastor, there is a national toothbrush day. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? And he said it is. Uh, it was on June 26, and I'm like, oh, that that's crazy. Celebrating toothbrushes. Toothbrushes are great, praise the Lord. But you know what? We need to celebrate our mothers. That's a good thing to celebrate. But I don't think that it should just be relegated to one day a year. Amen. To me, that's a cop out. One day a year. Yes, we honor them. We give them praise. We thank them. But it should be every day of the year, should it not? Amen. We are commanded by God to honor our mothers, but God did not say one day a year. His command was every day, every day. This commandment is a daily commandment, and it has a promise with it. Did you know that? God's promises are incredible. When God says something, he mean it, means it, folks. And he says that there are some promises that come along with honoring your parents. And the mama is included in that, amen? But the Father is not excluded, praise the Lord. It says in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, Children, obey your parents the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Many have faced troubles in their lives, and may even have a shortened life because they have not been obedient to the word of God in doing so. I truly believe that. The word of God says, don't be a fool and die before your time. We are to heed the scriptures. God has given them there for a reason, and it's to keep us safe, and it's to bring him glory and to bring him honor ultimately. When you honor your mother, you're ultimately honoring your father, which is in heaven. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That phrase, in the Lord, means to honor our parents in obedience to the Lord. Ephesians here is making reference to the scripture also in Exodus 20, verse 12. It says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The word honor in the Strong's is to fix a valuation. Remember, I talked last Sunday about being significant, putting a value on something. Your mother is significant, praise the Lord. And when we fix a valuation on that, we would, when we realize that, it will order our steps according to the word of the Lord in honoring them. It is fix a valuation upon. It means to revere honor and value. Today is designated to be Mother's Day and to give her honor. But I would say do not let this honor be only relegated to one day a year or even a few days a year. But instead, let it be fulfilling 
of God's commandment to all of us by our obedience to Father God. Amen. The obedience to God's word here in Ephesians says that if you do not honor both, and it's not just the one, it's, well, I'm going to make a choice. I'm just going to honor my mother, but daddy ain't honoring you. I'm not going to obey you, but I'll obey a mama or vice versa. He says, the obedience to God's word in Ephesians says that if you honor both of them, not just one, but, the, uh, the, but both of them, then it may be well with you. How many like it going well with you? I remember when I was a young man and I did not honor my mother. There were times that I didn't honor my mama. Anybody say that they did the same? Sure, we all have. Praise the Lord for forgiveness. Hallelujah. The grace and mercy of the Lord. It didn't go very well with me when I was a child in disobedience to mama. I remember one time, me and my brothers, there were three of us, I'm the youngest of the three, we're uh, traveling on the turnpike around Winchester, Kentucky. And uh, we were not being very good sons to our mother. And uh, finally, mama pulled over in that old 68 Cutlass Supreme. It was a two-door, hallelujah. Had a 350 rocket engine in it. I didn't realize that as a child, my mama drove a hot rod. Hallelujah. Those cars were something else. But she pulled over and she'd had enough. And in my mama's purse, she carried a belt. It was one of my dad's retired belts. And I think he retired it by choice because she took it and said, I'm going to use this on your boys when they disobey. And it was a thin belt. How many of y'all remember being spanked when you were a child? <laughs> I always wanted the wide belts. <laughs> Those little thin ones, I don't know, they just got less air restriction when they were flowing, and they really put the wallops on. But she got off on the side of that turnpike, and she parked. She got out, she went on the other side of the car, she opened the door, and she says, all three of you get out and line up beside the car. We knew that we were in trouble. So we marched out. We're like, oh, my, we're going to get it. We are going to get it. And about that time, a highway patrolman, Lights up his lights coming down the road, and we're all like, oh, my goodness. And he pulls over, leaves his lights going, gets out of the patrol car, and we all look at each other. Hey, we're probably going to get out of this one. <laughs> she won't whip us in front of that police officer. And she met the cop, and he says, ma'am, is everything okay? And she says, yes, sir, everything is fine. She says, I've got it under control. He says, what's going on? She says, my boys were being disobedient to me, and they weren't obeying me. And I'm getting ready to whip them all. He says, he told her, he says, do you need some help holding them? <laughs> it just drained out right there. And she said, no, I think I got another control. He says, have a nice day, ma'am. And he went on his way. We've all been there. We've all experienced those things. And the grace and the mercy that the Lord has given our mothers is incredible. You know, it, it's, it's the long-suffering part, which is a characteristic. It's a part of the Lord that is in our mothers that the Lord has given. But yet, they bring judgment. Amen. And thank the Lord for the judgment when it is needed. Hallelujah. That's love too. That is love. That's exactly right. Remember, God always commands to our weaknesses. I've said that many times to y'all. He commands to our weaknesses, those areas that we struggle in, and he knows that we have a propensity to in the sin because of what has happened in the past. He always commands for our weaknesses. So as for children, this must be an area that tends to be a struggle, as some of us know, if not all of us. Amen. And for many, as they grow up, this is an area the enemy will really tempt us all in because it is a command of the Lord to honor. So if the Lord has commanded it, do you not think the enemy will come around and tempt to be able to get you to come into disagreement with the word of God? Sure. Sure. It's disobedience. Many of us, as we were young, can look back now and see how we dishonored our parents and may have even judged them for things they did, did or said to us, but was for our own good because of their love for us. Amen. I've had to look back and say, Lord, forgive me for that time I judged mama or I judged daddy because they disciplined me or did this and that. You know, at the time, the word of God talks about the disciplining and, and, and bringing that, that judgment in, it's not pleasant at the time. You know, uh, training up a child, it's, man, it's laborsome sometimes. And some of us that have some children, it's a little bit harder to train them up. 
Hallelujah. Sandy and I, we got home from church one day uh, back in Texas and uh, from San Antonio. We traveled from the Broncos to San Antonio, a church we were involved in. And uh, it was a long day. We had a good little drive, a long day at church. We loved spending time with, there with the believers in the Lord. And uh, we uh, got home when it's like we both wanted a nap. It's unusual for Sandy to want a nap. She just keeps on going. I'm like, I'm paying that. I think I'll lie down too. We lied down. We took a little nap. And then we woke up to a still calmness, a quietness in the house. We're like, huh, that's not good. A lot of times when there's <laughs> quietness in the house, you better get up and you better check on it. And as we got up and, and walked out of the bedroom, I think she was bleeding out of the bedroom, come around the corner, you could hear something going on in the other room, which was in the kitchen. And there, our young Christopher Hayes Taylor had grabbed a hold of the chandelier on top of the kitchen dining room table and was swinging back and forth and just having a great time. Man. That fella, bless his heart, 11, remember the Sunday morning? We were getting ready to go to church and outside. He was out there. We we're, we're getting ready to load up. And he found the recent mud puddle. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when those things happen, we're like, you know, we just, oh, my goodness, we're going to be late, whatever. But we took a moment there. It was a moment. She went and got the camera, took some pictures. Got pictures of that somewhere. Crazy. He was covered head to toe. Head to toe. Had to take him in. Had to hose him off, wash him off, get new clothes. And then we went on to church. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when folks are late, it's okay. You know? Praise the Lord. But the mercy and the compassion that the Lord has given mothers is incredible. The love. The love that they have. Any of us, when we're young, we can look back and see those things now. I would encourage you this morning, if the Lord brings to your heart and remember any judgment that you placed on your mother or even your father, and you judge them wrongly or something you may still have in your heart against them, I would ask you to search your heart. Ask the Lord to search your heart in that so that you can be forgiven for that. Because it's not our place to judge them. It's like judging uh, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes, we we, uh, we speak the word to them, but we, we should not hold them in judgment because you know what? They're created in the image of God. Amen? And men, let me speak into this. Men, when you married your wife, you accepted her, but you were also given a mother-in-law. Amen? And when you dishonor your mother-in-law by talking bad about her or pointing out her personal failings that she comes short on, I believe that you are also dishonoring God in that. We need to honor even our mother-in-laws. Amen? Amen? We need to honor them. My mother, my mother is in heaven with the Lord now. But when I married this lady right here, my Sandy, I got an extra mother. Praise the Lord. And your mama has been such a blessing to me and our children. She is so wonderful. She's still here with us. Praise the Lord. And I love her and I honor her. And I thank God for her. She's the mother of my wife. There's a lot of qualities and characteristics that come from her mother that is in her that I see. There was something one day we're standing around and uh, we're just talking. And I can't, I can't do it. She could probably do it, but not on the spot. So I'm not going to ask her to do it. We were talking about something. And she stood there like this and kind of had the hand going like that. I said, that's Linda. That's her mama's name, Linda. Linda Peters. And I said, that's your mama. And I got a picture of it. And I sent it to her mama. I said, this is you all over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those things are passed on, are they not? They are passed on, praise the Lord. Even the little things. Mothers and fathers are given by the Lord for the stewardship of God's children. Ultimately, all my children, all your children, yes. You birth them. You raise them up. But they are given to you by a stewardship of the Lord to raise them up in the Lord. Amen. I believe it is God's original purpose that mothers and fathers show the love of Father God. Amen. But as we all know, neither of mothers or fathers are perfect. <laughs> You're looking at one right right here right now that's not perfect. I've had to go back many, many a time and say, listen. I was not showing the love of the Father there. I am sorry. Forgive me for what I said, what I did, or even what I may not have said. 
of what I may not have done. Some of y'all have been through the father's love, even the mother's love. That's one of the things we do at Heart of Forgiveness when we do the teachings. And it is an incredible, powerful tool to be able to speak truth and get any bridges that have been crumbled or might have some disaster going on there in the past, getting those things rebuilt. Because ultimately, God has put that in every one of us to love. But we've all experienced things, have we not, growing up, that may not be loving? So it's God's original purpose that mothers and fathers show the love of Father God. That is, we, as we all know, neither are not perfect because of what? The fall in the garden. Amen. I believe at the core, mothers love their children because God put it within them. Whether your mother living or not, some of us have mothers that are still living, praise the Lord. Some of us have mothers that have gone on and that are in glory. Whether they showed you the love of Father God, it is, or, or not, it is not your place to hold her in any judgment. Some of us have had experience with mother. It may have not been so perfect. You know what? I always minister to people when I'm, we're leading them through forgiveness. If there's anything there towards anyone and say, listen, when you encounter people, even, even your mothers and fathers, whatever, they've had certain things they've had to deal with when they were growing up. And that has what has molded them in the way they are. Some of them have really been through some hurts, some pains and some traumas and things like that. Some of them may not even have known how to love and to nurture in that respect. But it's not our place to judge them. So I would encourage you this morning as your pastor, if any of you have any hurts there, let it go in the name of the Lord. Speak forgiveness. Speak forgiveness. Even to the mother-in-laws. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mother-in-laws. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for mother-in-laws. God's purpose for mothers is to show a side of his character that is loving, that is providing, protecting, and even feeding the children. A scripture in Luke is a beautiful example of protection from the Father. And it is Luke 13, 34. It says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. That is a picture of our Lord, our Father in heaven, of wanting to gather us underneath him and just bring us in to protect. Many years ago, I read a story about a hen that there, a fire had come through, and it went through this one farm and what have you, much like the forest fires that have been uh, here in New Mexico and one we just recently experienced. And the people were coming in, extinguishing the firefighters and stuff. And they came upon a little a, a, a hen, a mama hen. And they're like, oh, my goodness, you know. And one of them gently picked it up. And underneath, the mama was, she was dead. But underneath her wings were still all those little baby chicks. And they were still just huddled there right next to mom. That is a beautiful picture, I believe. It is a picture of mothers, but it's a picture ultimately of our Father, which is in heaven, according to this verse. It says, oh, how would I have loved to just gather you together and brought you in, loved on you, cared on, cared for you, provided for you, and protected you. Many of us have godly mothers, but some may not. It seems a little easier to give honor to someone who displays a godly character, doesn't it? I've had it asked to me before, how in the world do I honor my mother if she is not a believer? And I simply respond, honoring is a choice. No matter what, you have a choice in everything that you do. Amen? How do you honor? You respect. You reverence. One of the things that uh, a wise lady told my wife one time, uh, back at the church we were at, San Antonio, Miss Sarita, her husband had gone on to be with the Lord. He was a he was a pastor, and she told Sandy, she says, "You never dishonor your husband in public in front of other people." And I believe that goes the same 
for husbands when it comes to their wives, you never dishonor them in public, but you hold them up in high esteem. You honor them. You reverence them. You value them. I value this lady right here. The Lord's given her to me. She's given me 10 kiddos. Wow. Praise God. Mothers have that sacrificial love within, and it is given from above. Many of you heard the story of Susanna Wesley. Anybody ever heard that name before? Glory to God. Amen. Susanna Wesley, she was 20, the 25th child in an English family. She had very little education. She married an older man and gave him 19 children. Nine of those children did not live. Of the 10 that she raised, there were two sons that were named John and Charles. Some of you have heard those names, hopefully. John and Charles Wesley, who changed the known world in their time. And they still have an influence to this day because of their godly convictions. Talk to them from their mother, who sincerely loved Christ and taught them to honor God the Father. A mother has been given a place of influence upon the following generation that can be a divine influence to show how to honor God and love him with their lives. This is really a great responsibility. And that responsibility falls on the shoulder of these mothers. I want to read you a poem. Many of you may have heard parts of this poem or maybe even the whole poem, but it was written by William Ross Wallace who lived in the 1800s, and it reads, Blessings on the hand of women, angels guarded strength and grace. In the palace, cottage, hovel, oh, no matter where the place, would that storms never assailed it. Rainbow bows ever gently curled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Infancies, the tender fountain, power made with beauty flow. Mothers first to guide the steamlets, from them souls unresting grow. Grow on for the good or evil, sunshine streamed or evil heard. From the hand that rocks the cradle, rules the world. Woman, how divine your mission. Here upon our natal sod, keep own, keep the young heart open always to the breath of God. All truth trophies of the ages are from the hand that rocks the cradle, is the hand that rules the world. Blessings on the hand of women, father, sons, and daughter cry. And the sacred song is mingled with the worship in the sky. Angles where no tempest darkens, rainbows ever more hurled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Isn't that beautiful? The influence from one generation to the next is incredible. How we speak truth, how we show truth, how we show love. And then it passes from generation to generation. Hannah's song was so beautiful was talking about carrying that on, carrying on that love into the next generation to you to show that. Amen. We honor our mothers here today and call them blessed, but we declare this is not relegated to one day a year, but it's a lifetime of our lives. While you have breath, praise the Lord. While you have breath, Honor thy father and thy mother, so that it may go well with you. Your days may be long upon the earth. Amen. Because in honoring them, what we are actually doing, we are honoring God, and we receive the promise of the Lord. I'll throw in there again, honoring our mother-in-laws. Amen. Hallelujah. What is the old saying of mothers and outlaws or something like that? Your mother and I, had, I think we had one moment, and I wouldn't even really call it a moment. Uh, we were having dinner, one of the family deals, 
was funny. And we had our oldest son, and he was just making a lot of commotion and stuff. And I was a young daddy. She was a young mama. And that stuff just really didn't bother her a lot. And I was like, man, he's making this commotion. And so I just kind of gathered him up, and I went outside with him. I'm trying to console him, you know, and this and that. And, you know, it's amazing when it's somebody else's child, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, penetrate our heart. We're like, oh, shit. And I tell our people in our church, like, don't worry about it. It's okay. Remember our kids were in the nursery bouncing off the walls? I insulated that room for a reason. <laughs> you know? It's okay. We love our children. But I had made my way outside, and I'm out there consoling my oldest son, big boy now, hallelujah. And out walks Sandy's mama. He says, here, let me have him. I'll take him. Say, no, 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 no. I said, it's okay. You go back in there and I'll stay out here. And I was kind of unnervous about being there with the family and everything anyway. She said, no, 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 let me. And really, truly, that is the only thing that your mother and I ever had. And I wouldn't even really call it friction. I was like, nope, that's okay. And she told, she told me, I remember this. She says, I'm kind of nervous about being here. And I don't like being around the family on this side, what have you. And I just had to laugh. We just had a moment of laughing out there. We thought that was really funny. We both kind of consoled Alex together. And we both went back in, praise the Lord. But we honor our mothers here today, and we call them blessed. Amen. Don't just let this be relegated to today. Amen. If your mother is still living, honor her. Call her blessed. If she's in another state or somewhere else, call her on the phone. Say, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you did. Thank you for all that you sacrificed. Thank you for everything that you gave me. Thank you for showing the love of our Father, which is in heaven. Let us listen to the instruction of the Lord in Proverbs 1, 7 through 9. It's, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Also in Proverbs 6, 20 through 22, it says, My son, keep thy father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother, bind them continually upon thy heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall continually lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. One of the things that I'm constantly remembered, and I hear my mother's voice coming back to me from the years past, and it was this. Walk in the light that has been revealed to you. Just do that, she would tell me. She said, walk in the light that's been revealed to you. I received a lot of wisdom from my mom. I received an incredible example. I would hear my mother growing up as a child, many times in the bedroom, crying, weeping, and praying. Sometimes I just kind of tune in a little bit. There's one other pastor has stated many times before, and I heard him, I forget the pastor's name, but I kind of fell in the same category with him. I would hear my name being called out also, weeping and crying over me. Because of the things that I had gotten involved in, the mothers, the love of the father that was put in them, of going before praying and being there is incredible. Amen. Honoring is a choice that we all are faced with every day. Make the choice today. Make the choice today to continue your life upon this earth by honoring your father in heaven, by honoring your mother. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Let me close with this scripture from Romans. In Romans 13, 7, it says, Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Our mothers fall right into that category, praise the Lord. We are commanded to honor them, reverence them, be there for them. As they get older, some of us need to be there for our mothers. Listen, your mother was there, and she took care of your little hiney 
That's the best way I can put it this morning. Took care of your hiney many times. The Lord has commanded you to love them and to honor them. Our mothers are due of our honor, and the best way to do so is to honor God and be thankful for the mother you have or had in this lifetime. And as believers, you still have a mother. Did you know that? She's in heaven. She's passed on, just like my mother. When I get to heaven, I'll see my mama, and I'll have an eternity to spend with her. This life here is so short. If I were to draw a line, not indicating the beginning, but the beginning of time, maybe on earth, from here to that wall, the lifetime that we have in that span, it's just a little fraction, maybe a little pinhead or a dot, so small. But in eternity, it's, a, it, it's forever. It never ends. And we'll have that time with them. Amen? I want to close with a prayer, and then afterwards we're going to pray uh, over some uh, Joe. Joe's requested that we be going in for some stuff. And uh, let's call the elders of the church, lay hands on them, and morning before we're going to pray over it. But would you please join in with me to pray over and bless our mothers, whether they're here or not here, if they're somewhere else in this country or out of the country. I don't know if some of you may have mothers out of the country. I have no idea. <laughs> but praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Father God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the mothers you've given us. All of us have had them. And have a mother, Father God. Lord, we, we speak and call them blessed. We thank you for your provision for them. We thank you, Father God, for the strength that you've put in them, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the tolerance you've put in them, the long suffering within. We thank you for the many nights that they've stayed up with us as children when we may have been sick, just caring for us, the times that we as children have gotten hurt. And mama was always there to mend and speak truth and just soothe whatever the pain was. We thank you for them, Father God. And Lord, as the word says, we rise up early. We've risen up early this morning. And we call our mothers blessed. Bless every woman in here, every mother, every future mother. We pray for our future moms or moms that are raising children up right now, Father God. Lord, just continue to equip them with your grace and your mercy, Lord to continue to walk in and do the things you've called them to do. We call them blessed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God good?